Hello, Questers. Happy Wednesday podcast from your sponsors from Quest. Hello, everybody. Real stormy here. The Northeast trees are down. So if power goes out, yep, we'll see what happens. But so far, so good, guys. But we'll see. We're getting an April blast here. So just hang on with me. If the power does come out and uh, come out and uh, comes right back on, I'll be right back on. But let's cross our fingers and hope that we can make the full podcast. And from Canada is the queen of synopsis for the quest of Oak Island is Judy. Hello, Judy. Hello, John. Hi, everybody out there. And it's good to be here as always. I so look forward to being with you all. Let's. Put this right out there. This is the last night to win a book of the Jerusalem Files from Corrine and Christopher. I thank him so much for giving the opportunity to my members to win a free book, the Jerusalem Files, and also our normal Wednesday podcast giveaway of a Quest hat. And when we do the draw, like we've been doing the past three draws, if you've won a hat, You'll get the book and we'll redraw for the hat. So I wanted to put that out there. And my contact email is questofoakisland at aol.com. There's Gloria. There's Super. There's Connors. You can get a hold of them through the book site, uh, Connor. Just go to the Jerusalem Files. Uh, web page or whatever he's got there and he'll answer you hello john fisher hello woody bog i love that name woody bog brenda with the hat on she's ready tonight judy oh good sand dollar ray gloria fritz Franklin Dow is in the house. There's Renee. Hit and book night tonight, Renee and Digger. There's Jeff M. There's Raymond. Not our Raymond, but Ray Collette. There's the Turf Monster. There's Vicky. Hello, Kay from Tennessee. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Ashley. Diane's in the house. And so is Linda and Carol. Oh, my lordy forty. They're piling in now. Hello. Janet Scorza, you broke your arm. Oh, my lordy 40. Hope you get better. Linda Shaftel, the other Linda, Cindy Moreau. Hello, I cannot see you or hear you, King John. I cannot see you and hear you, King John. Cannot. You got the storm on your uh, house there, Sydney? <clears throat> There's David, Diane Otto. It's hashtag book, Diane, hashtag book. After tonight, it'll be hashtag hat, but tonight is hashtag book. You'll get a book and a hat if you never want a hat. 
Little lards. Terry Pohl made it on time. Rebecca Harrison. Gary Hills. The last book giveaway, Woody Bog. They gave us four books to give away each week. And tonight is the fourth book, which equals no more free books. Hello, Gary. Hope you're doing good. No problem, Janet. Do what you got to do. No problemo. I also want to put out there for a member named Jumpier GT. Again, the name is Jumpier GT. He has four more weeks, Judy, for a free Quest hat, free around the world. Wow, congratulations. Keep it up. Yep. I want to see you get that. Yep, in a picture. He's been a marshal for 23 months. And one of the perks is two years, free hat. It's one way to get one or win one. You know what I mean, Judy? Right, exactly. And uh, And I thank him for what he does. Yep, I thank him also. I thank all these people, which we're going to go down the line here, the YouTube membership. And we need you even more when the show stops. So don't leave me in the summer. Because <clears throat> I still think we're going to get a uh, um, season 12. I agree with you. I Now, I heard some today say they don't think so, but I think we will. Yep. So I want to thank Jumpier, Betty, Mark, Tammy, Luke, Patricia, Sandra, Sideways, Dave, Carolyn, Super, Becky, Wayne, Alina, Paul, Carol, Virginia, Gary, Rebecca, Barbara, Starlene, Jeff M, Sand Dollar, and Roxy, and Joanne and Hardaby for their support every day. There's the professor, Daniel Spaniel. There's the hook, Kathy. And also, Judy, thank you for what you do on the podcast. You're welcome, John, with all my heart. Yep. Hello, Gary Nelson. I want to thank Daniel Spino in Charlotte. I want to thank them for all they do. And for Muyan Osprey, say prayers that uh, we get him back shortly. Hello, Robot. Hello, Hobbies Hobo. I want to thank all my moderators. Tammy, Judy, Daniel, Starlene, Kathy, and Tanya from Portugal. Also, Jeff M., David B., Glory on the YouTube side. Also, to our lifetime contributor, Chris Dona. Got to thank my main members. They come from the Quest of Oak Island Facebook group. Group, If you guys want to join over from the YouTube channel. We're live on Facebook and YouTube today. I do uh, download to Twitter and uh, some on Discord, some Instagram. No more on Twitch or Rumble. Also, our members on Spotify for podcasts around the world, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, and Amazon with Alexa. We're live there, and they hear our podcast, Judy. Good, John. Uh, that sounds interesting for sure. Yep. <clears throat> like I said, I want to thank Corey and Christopher for the giveaway. I thank them so much. And from the Quest membership worldwide, we thank you. For sure, John. That's been it's been fun doing it, hasn't it? Yep. I've enjoyed it. Yep. Next week, well, last night was season eleven twenty one, the Strays and Arrow. Next week, season eleven, episode twenty two was Abbey Road. The same night at ten PM we got a digging down. This is USA only. And the next week on the sixteenth, we have another ten PM, but that's drilling down but I do not have the episode after Abbey Road. I don't have one on my channel for uh, after uh, next week's either, John. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> I got one little beef, maybe. 
You remember yesterday, it was a good show, not bad. Medium show. No, Kathy. And um, the refining fence posts that I thought that that's what they were, fence posts. I didn't think there were any kind of bolt posts when Jack was finding these posts and these. Uh... Yeah, I got Judy on the phone, Kathy. Um, and they were going about all this wood. And where they're at in the northern side, they said it was dry there, Judy. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, they did. Hello, we are watchers. And um, they said they found these posts right down the line. And what does a fence do? It goes right down the line with uh, spiked old round wood, which they would tap on some kind of fencing to keep the oxen out or the cattle out of the swamp. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. So I thought those stakes were just merely fence posts that just fell in when the swamp started filling up and getting mucky way up on the north end. What do you guys think? No, I think you're you're probably very right. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if they were put there to form the swamp itself or if it was for a fence to keep the animals out. Thank you so much, Turf Monster. Hello, Becky. And I was wondering why they didn't pick up most of the metal fence, whatever it is, iron, steel, whatever they used in the old days. We found the post, but then I was waiting for the uh, metal detector to go off on the fence part. You know what I mean? That's all we're finding is the post, no rotted metal. So I think it was just a fence. Fence post. That could very well be. It'll be interesting to see if they look into it further. Yep. So that's what I got on that. That sort of got me a little crazy. Why don't they say, well, it looks like a fence post, even though Fred Nolan, you show, he shows them with that big fence post type of thing. I don't know if they can hold back dirt. You'd have to have a wall to hold back the dirt to make the swamp. So those are just fence posts. And some of them say there's, they could be survey markers. But uh, that's an idea, yes. Jan, I'm saying when they had cattle, the oxen were probably not free roaming, probably tied up or in a pen, yeah. But I thought they said they had a lot of cattle and horses on the island. Am I mistaken? I, I'm pretty sure, at least for sure, the cattle they did have. I'm, I'm sure I read that. Yeah, and horses, didn't they? had horses there. Yes. So if you don't want them to go in the swamp, you put up a fence. Well, whatever animals they had up there. Scott says, or property line posts, maybe. It's well, hard to say. Well, usually in those old days, the property lines was uh, rock walls. You know what I mean? True, yes. Or one special rock on the corner with some kind of chiseled out mark or something you know what i mean because they know the wood won't, yeah. they know the wood don't last you know yeah david if i'm getting beats uh, judy's on the phone we're getting a big windstorm here so if you hear beeps that's better than uh me going off the internet you know judy Right, for sure, John. You sound fine over the phone, but uh, I can't hear you on on the uh, podcast. Uh, don't worry about it. Hello, Becky. Thank you so much for a super sticker. Thank you. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you, Becky. Whatever they hear, they hear. Technical difficulties when a big storm like this hurts. Lucky I had Judy's phone call come in. You know what I mean, guys? Yeah, John lost a big tree today, guys. Yeah. It's been bad. Yep. Yeah. All right. You getting ready, Judy? Yep, I can do that, John. They haven't found any uh, ox shoes lately, Janet, in the uh, swamp. They haven't come up with any yet. Just wood. It is what it is. I like this Ashley. Great. 
All right, let me get the, the queen of synopsis's picture on the stage here. I do want to say some of you are asking what the kitty's name is that I'm holding in this picture. I had to ask my daughter, and this picture was taken around Christmas time, and it so happened friends of theirs took the kitty, and uh, we're going to keep it. Well, it turned out that uh, their cat they already had didn't get along with with the little guy. So uh, my daughter and son-in-law had to take it back. So they repossessed it, so they call him Repo. 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 <laughs> All right, Judy, your picture's up. We got a long synopsis. The queen's got a long synopsis. So take your time. Then we'll get into the screenshots. About a hundred of them after she does her synopsis. It's all yours, Judy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we got season eleven, episode twenty-one. We're almost done, guys. Straight as an arrow. Episode twenty-one begins on a new morning in the Money Pit area where Rick and Scott are talking to Roger from Dumas, who has bad news concerning the garden shaft. 470 gallons of water a minute is rushing into the bottom of the shaft at 106 feet down. Rick asks him what they can do next, and Roger says he needs to sit down with the folks at Dumas headquarters to come up with a plan. He tells Rick he will get back to Scott as soon as the decision is made. Later, Rick joins Craig and Doug in the research center where they are meeting via video with Corian in the Netherlands and Emiliano in Italy. The plan is for Corian and Emiliano to find places in Europe that prove the Templars and Vikings did work together and they are connected to Oak Island. Corian and Emiliano will do their research and get back to them. Over in the north, northern end of the swamp, the team is looking at one of the spots John Edwards believes could hold a treasure. Marty arrives with Ian and as the team shows them a large boulder at the bottom of this indentation, Ian asks Billy to turn it over so he can examine under it. Since the boulder is on top of what looks like a man-made foundation, Ian wants to see how it is put together. Ian says the boulder has definitely been moved and probably for the purpose of draining the area of water. He finds layers of rocks with wooden sticks in between them and pulls one of the sticks up for C4 testing. The following morning in the war room, the team meets with the Dumas team from their headquarters via video. Dumas informs them that their pumps could remove the water in the shaft down to 106 feet. However, the constant pumping could also collapse uh, the, the shaft. They could maintain a depth of 55 feet down in the area where, a year ago, the fellowship found what could be an offset chamber and the wood from here showed traces of gold. They all agree to do a horizontal drill at this spot in the hope of finding something. Later, in the north of the swamp, Billy is excavating and pulls up a huge tree stump from the indentation they have been working on. Since trees cannot grow in a swamp, they now believe this area has been artificially manipulated. Jack then pulls up a large hand-cut log and says this had to have been placed here. He then picked up two small sticks that also looked to be hand-cut. Billy bails the remaining water from the now large round hole, and they see a layer of rocks on the bottom, obviously placed by man. 
Also, there are rocks around the edges that, Billy says, looks to be there to keep the sides from caving in. They decide to stand down until the rest of the team sees this. We now join Rick and Doug, who are on their way to Halifax, to the home of Eric Rokloski, son of Paul Rokloski, Oak Island researcher and author, well known for his work. Paul has passed away, and Eric has found an artifact owned by Paul that he wants the team to see and perhaps research. The item, found by Robert Dunfield in the 1960s and passed on to Paul, is about three inches long and comes to a sharp point. Doug believes it could be a bolt off of a medieval crossbow like those used during the Crusades, of which the Templars paid, played a large part. Could this artifact point the team as to who was on Oak Island? Doug takes some pictures, and they leave the item with Eric until they are ready to do an analysis on it. Later that afternoon, in the northern area of the swamp, the team is looking at the circle of stones feature found earlier. Rick points, it, Rick points out it is layered like other stone features on the island with two rocks over one rock. Gary has found no metals, and Jack says the hole is full of wooden logs like the ones found by Fred Nolan. Fred believed these were stakes used to form the swamp. Ian and Steve arrive, and Ian says this ring of rocks is man-made and could be from the early 1700s or before. Steve does his measuring and finds the structure to be one foot under sea level, the same as the stone paved area which Ian dated to the 1200s. Ian wants the area to be disturbed no farther as he takes a coarse sample of water and soil for testing. Rick declares, let's get back to work. The episode ends back in the war room where the team is getting the research results from Corian and Emiliano. Corian found two places in the North Netherlands, the first, a stone quarry from the 14th century, where there is a section covered with charcoal drawings similar to those found on Oak Island. The second place is under a Roman castle where there are large catacombs where he believes the Templars may have hidden on their way to America. The symbols here also are like those on Oak Island. Emiliano discovered Moramando Abbey in Italy, where a group of monks from the 12th century produced hundreds of manuscripts on subjects like agriculture, astrology, and many more. Marty wonders if these monks are connected to the modern-day Masons. It is decided Rick will lead his team to Europe while Marty oversees the island. Rick's team will also meet with Professor Gaspani while in Italy as he has new information for them. Will this trip connect the Templars and Vikings to Oak Island? Join us next week, fellow questers, to find out. And in the meantime, stay safe, please. Very excellent Queen of Synopsis, Judy and Repo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Repo, thanks you too. Okay. Hello, Lewis, Andre, Scottish Digger. Who else came in? Of course, this will be all printed out in the Facebook group, The Quest of Oak Island on Facebook. If you're not there, try to join if you could. Very, very good. And 
what I wanted to take is a little Serbic of that snippet. What did I say? Skirpit? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Snippet's a good word. Yeah, a, a little snippet. All right. Now, if you're at the north end of the island, guys, and think about it, obviously the water's not up to that far, Judy, because it's in the 1100s, 1200s, and 1300s. So the water's not up that far. It's pretty dry there. Right. Before they blocked it off or whatever. I'm not talking about when the road was there. I'm talking way back when. Gotcha. So when you said here, now think about this, guys. Gary has found no metals already. And right. Jack says the hole is full of wooden logs, like the ones found by Fred Nolan. Now, if I'm taking down a fence, I'm not going to just take one log and throw it, the next log or spike and throw it. I'm going to wait till I got a bunch of fence posts, and then throw them all in one hole. So what I think it is, is when they dismantled the fence post and obviously took the metal away, they just threw it in this hole. What do you think? That, that's a good idea, John. It could very well have been. It is so hard to say. <clears throat> the professor, one correction, Paul Reklamski was not an author. But he should have been and wrote a book about Oak Island. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. I don't know why I had it in my mind that he had written a book. Maybe I heard it one time that he was hoping to. Just a dump hole in the swamp, Andre. I mean, if I hit it, but the hole there was dry. I'm saying. Where they're at now. That was dry land. That's why they're finding stumps there. And just a dump hole. It doesn't have to be in the swamp to clear your land out. But if you've got a bunch of fence posts for 300 feet, and you got one every 10 feet, well, you're going to wait till you get a bunch of them, put them on your wagon, have the oxen drag them into a dump site, dry, and throw them in there. That's only my theory on that. That's all. Just, that's what comes through my head. And... Uh, that's what I said. You know, trying to just figure out things. And you're good at it too, by the way. William, it could have been anything. The circular formation with stones. There's so many stones there, who knows? Daniel says a circular rock line depression. Does that sound what was found, like the one found on Lot 5? I think so, yes. Yep. Yep. Firewood pile. You get bored, you start piling rocks to clear the pasture. Who knows? Must have had some kind of purpose, William, way back when. We're talking 1100, 1200, 1300, you know what I mean? Sounds like it was two islands, then they flooded it. There's no other story. Templars, Vikings. Well, that's as far as I was thinking. Just think about where they were. It was dry at the time if they want to tie the Templars and the Vikings in. You know, Judy? Right. Exactly, John. And I mean, there is a chance the Templars could have been there in the late 1100s, but I don't know who else could have been there that early. <laughs> uh, Daniel says that the rock line depression had a specific function i will cough it up soon you're gonna be coughing up a lot of stuff soon <laughs> we're gonna have to jail him and not let him out till he gives all this stuff yep. all right let's get judy out of here okay now let's go through our screenshots five after seven disgusting disgusting wow my brain is fried tonight guys Discussion <laughs> on Straight as an Arrow. Four more episodes left. Season 11, episode 21. Could be, William, but we don't know how big that uh, 
that wharf was. I mean, they got the uh, stone pathway, the big one and the small one for the skittle trucks to come in. Skittle trucks, skittle boats. Scott says, morning, Roger. Rick, morning, Roger. What can you tell me about the flooded garden shaft? And there we are at the garden shaft. A little Google Fun Play ad. I didn't see it come in. It snuck in on me. So he's going to relay the latest flood information from the garden shaft. There he is. Roger. Wishes he had better news. As a new day begins on Oak Island. I'm sure he hated to give them that news. There's Scott. There's Rick. A daunting. I like when they come up with these words. The daunting ordeal. Go ahead, Judy. Well, they got some, some good writers out there, John, that like to keep us guessing, I think. You want to say what Daniel just said? Okay. Daniel says there's no known association between the Templars and Vikings other than a short-lived relationship in the Levant during the Crusades. Anything be beyond that is alternate history and not based on fact. Just my opinion. Don't torch me, Templar lovers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try, Daniel. We'd like it to be Templars. Here's Eric Swartz. One would think that the Vikings and the Templars would not work together. Vikings are pillagers and plunderers. Am I making sense? I hear you. I hear the Vikings are pretty brutal. So, but you never know. I'm just trying to get answers of where the gold signature and civil signatures is coming from the, the garden shaft. That's all I want to know right now. Two hundred and twenty nine year mystery and then add season eleven to that one, Judy. Yes, really, John. Uh Tammy Hurst says, I was wondering if the Vikings were pagans and not Christians, would they have built a stone cross? I think they would have built the cross, myself, in my opinion, uh, if it was needed, no matter what. That's when the water started coming in at 90 feet, and I guess they're going to try to go in where uh, that gold was found in the wood at about 55 feet. Yes. So we're not going deeper. We're working our way out of the shaft. Do you remember when they, they found that area where they thought there was a chamber? Yep. I, yeah, they did it in the six inch drill, I think. Yep. At 106, the water started coming in. I can't get over how fast it came in. So fast. Yep. Sydney says, I read the Vikings were there to get wood for ship repairs and building. Many Vikings were converted to Christianity, which is why they participated in the Crusades. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Here's my tattoo. I got to show my tattoo on a daily basis. The tunnel under the garden shaft to the baby blob. That's my tattoo. <laughs> oh, we got to see this, John. Hello, Brett. Hello, XBL. And again, they said in the shaft, 
is salt water. So we got that established, Judy. Yes, right. So there's a good chance it could be a flood tunnel. Yep, there they are. Five-figure drains. And what Judy said in her synopsis, 479 gallons per minute. Lordy, 40, holy mooyan. That's a lot of water. This is what they were thinking about drawing down. The least retrieve the drill is down there, you know. Yes. It, no, they they haven't got it out, right? If they empty it, then they can get it out. It's, yep. It's, Am I right? Yep, it's buried down there. Oh boy. And, well, the guys had to get out of there in a hurry. And here we are at the research center. There's Rick. There's. Greg looking a little thin like me. Hope he's okay. Yes. There's so too. Doug. Good man, Doug. And look who's there. And I love the product placement. I was going to put that on Twitter, but somebody already put it there. The product placement, as you see, three books on the lower right-hand corner. Very good, okay. Corian. Product placement. <laughs> Good one. Good to see you, Corian. <laughs> There's Molino. I got to practice my Italian. If this other guy's coming back, I got to talk Italian. <laughs> of course, the trip is next week. It's called AB Road. If you look on my channel, Quest of Oak Island in the YouTube channel. I did post the pre-show for next week on the promos they gave us. Hey, the stone the piles are from a 12 or 50. The piles are from a 12 or 50, he says. <laughs> Andrea Gaspani. There he is, our main man. Right on. He's an interesting guy. Nope, he's got the new information on the cross. And the tone piles. Maybe more updated dates. Uh. And the stars. Come si chiama? One, uno, due, tre, quattro, sei, cinco, sei, mento, mento, otto. Nova dici. There's Corian again. More product placement. Four books to the right. <laughs> well, he doesn't look too worse for wear for all the uh, uh, traveling he's been doing with those books. Yeah, he's all over the place. Oh, he is. And here they are getting out of the SUV, going to supposedly John Edwards X marks the spot. I mean, when they say a circle of stones, that don't really, it looks like a circle of stones, but doesn't really look like it's really a circle of stones. You know what I mean, guys? Right. Not at this point anyway, unless right. they're able to see something we can't. Yeah. Yeah. They're bringing the spooner, man. Maybe to look for that dump truck. Daniel says, I wonder how many frequent flyer miles Corian has at this point. Right. That is quite a few. Right. <laughs> and they want to move that rock. You see Steve putting the GPS staff. He's actually standing on that rock that they're going to lift up and look underneath. But as, right. but as far as a circle of stones, maybe the other pictures when they dug deeper. But look in the pile past Steve. That other opening, 
I see rocks on the bottom there too. You guys see that? We're like uh, Marty's pointing. Yes, and good size ones too. So, I don't know what they're talking about. If it is a circle of rocks, it looks to me like it's quite large. And there's Billy grabbing that rock or boulder. He did that really good. Well, that's what that machine's for. <laughs> so they think so it's possibly oh. that boulder was moved around. Um, Eric Schwartz is wondering, is this circular structure 13 feet like the others? Never measured it. Good thought. Yeah, they didn't know. Good thought, Eric. Yep. Nice fall day with all the trees getting brown, even the swamp grass brown. <clears throat> and you remember this other thing that he said, it just came to me now, guys, because my brain is froze. When Stephen Gupto was going to do some GPS coordinates, he was going near some rocks and he said this. Well, this spring is really filling up this area. Could have been another well because it's on the dry part of the island. You see him way up there past the eye of the swamp. Could have just been a spring well for people to drink if they're stowing around, stowing on the sides. What do you think of that, guys? Good thought, John. I do remember him saying that, and I just didn't pay much attention, I guess. Yep, the spring water's coming in fast. And you see him in the distance here on this picture. There's no way that was wet up there. Because again, no. with the tree stumps coming out of there and all that, tree stumps do not grow in a swamp or in water. So I like this idea way up there. Could have been just another spring well. Get drinking water, which is more important to them than gold. If you don't have drinking water on the island, then you're in trouble, you know? Right. Yeah, you got to have that for sure. Uh, you have to water the oxygen. Back to the war room. The <laughs> uh, water the oxen, Scott says, yes. Yep. And now they're talking to Duma. Seeing which way they're going to go. Cameron, Carter. So we're going to do a 60 horsepower pump to maintain it. But that would weaken the structure. If they went down all the way to 106 feet, it could be possibly lead to a collapse. Oh, uh, we don't want that. No, not ever after everything they've been through. So they're going to go back to that item at 55 feet in the wood that Emma found and detected gold that could be the offset chamber. I would rather dig 55 feet than 106 feet and bury something for offset chamber or 250 feet into the granite or the bedrock. 55 feet, still deep, but I'll take that better than the depths. What do you think, Judy? <laughs> I agree, John. I, I'm anxious to see if there is a chamber there. And this will tell us, I hope. Hmm. The offset chamber. Lordy, 40, holy Muyan. <laughs> and this is the drill going sideways at some 50 feet from inside the garden shaft. <clears throat> now they're back to the swamp. There's a stumpy. They cleared it off for something, uh, Judy. Really? That is one big stump. His new word, Jack's word is strains. Oh, yeah. No way. <laughs> No, it wasn't a cork stump. They didn't say it was corkland. They didn't, they didn't give us any information until they do their carbon testing. 
I'm still waiting for the carbon dating on the uh, bottom of the shaft on them planks. Right, yeah, we haven't got that yet. I thought for sure we'd get it last night. Yeah. What are they waiting for? Who the heck knows? <laughs> it's definitely been chopped, yeah, because it's a fence post. There's a location there, right? Way up on the top, the north end of the swampage. Lined with rocks. Yep. I guess he's hitting rocks all the way around, so I don't know. I think he would find that all over the place on that swamp. That oh. could be too. A little rowdy, Roddy. The swamp takes up a lot of time. They like to go in the swamp because it eats up minutes. You know what I mean, guys? Right. I think so, too. I Now, Ashley just said she's bored with the swamp, but I find the swamp interesting no matter what they do. Yeah, Janet, we don't know when the, the shaft was flooded, what the time period was, but I think it was in the fall. And here goes Rick and Doug to Halifax. Saying that Paul worked with Dan Blankenship. Yep. I remember that guy. Yes. And his son lives in Halifax or he lived in Halifax to meet with Eric Wachowski, the son of the late Oak Island researcher, Paul. The heart stone. Daniel, what is a fish spear? <laughs> or one of those uh, tools with all the points on the end that they picked up hay. They fluffed hay with it with the spikes on the end of a rake. Somehow that is buzzing in my brain right now. So whatever's buzzing, guys, you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> good, and, good and loud. Why is that crossbow spike or something long they found like that on the beach, uh, Daniel? Gary found one on the beach. And if my memory serves me right. I don't know. I can't remember. And here they are at Eric's house. And Robert Dunfield, they got three of these. So they must have great note taking that they know there's three of these available and they can't find the other two, Judy. So they must have great sort of bookkeeping if they did find something that was kind of weird, you know? Right. I'm sure they must have. And Doug keeps up on everything. And that's the artifact. It was suggested now that it was a crossbow. See that word suggested? Yes. Oh, please don't mention that guy, Daniel. Daniel says, guys, this piece has a controversial history involving Joven Hutton Pulitzer. I just told, I I just told him, was... I just told him I don't want to hear that name. Okay. <laughs> and you, and, and, you, and you read it. <laughs> I just wanted everybody out there to know what was happening. Time for the plank. By the time of the end of the series, season, you might be walking the plank. You've you got four shows to go. Oh, geez. Does Repo have to go with me? Yep, Repo goes on the plank too. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter might have something to say about that. And there he is, Eric. I 
guess they got to do the ablation on that, you know, and Emma does all her thing on that, you know what I mean? Right, yes. It will be interesting to see what comes up. I don't know if that looks like a round circle of stones or what. So I was trying to convince myself it looked like the 13-foot circle on lot five. But they got to do a lot more digging for me to be convinced this is a complete circle of stones. But that's Johnny's opinion. And, and we can't see it yet. So perhaps next week we will. Construct. Just rocks thrown all over the place in layers. Another fence post, like what Fred found. Becky, no, not Judy walking the plank. She almost made it to the end of the season. <laughs> Big, long strokes with an X. Yep. <laughs> Fred was convinced there were survey markers. But holy schmoly, that big? Like a benchmark, Drew, they would be off an old rock or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, you would know about survey markers. So. They, they would never use anything about like wood that would rot after a while. So it was like a pin, uh, uh, something steel, a steel rod, a piece of uh, reinforcing steel that they can work off of and just plunge it two feet in the ground. Yep, Rebecca, they did say he put them around lot five. Yeah, we had, if you look back on our page, they even show pictures of that 13-foot round thing on Robert Young's uh, land that he put boulders around. We got pictures in the files. There's the whole gang marching along in line. A ring of rocks. What do you guys think? Does that look like a ring of rocks? I don't know. Well, it looks like half of one anyway. To me. That's my main man, Steve. I had to get him in there doing the survey. I haven't seen him online. about a foot under sea level which matches the paved area as well which was dated in the 1200s so yep i hear you daniel and the process continues yep you got that right How long ago? How far back? Well, Franklin, they got the long reach excavator. Billy's excavator he has there is the short arm. The upper nade, the large boulder was on top. Yep. Back to the war room we go. There's Corey and Wait a minute, he's got a different book on top of his uh, product placements now. What's he trying to code? Is there oh, a yeah. code? Is there a code in this picture here, Corian? <laughs> Is there a cryptic code you're trying to tell us? Yep, Daryl. Like I said, Duma's mining knows what they're doing, so whatever they got to do, as long as they get paid, they'll do whatever you want. They're professionals, you know, Judy? Right, they are. Uh, I, I do have great respect for them. There's Corrine again. In the war room, on the monitor. You got it right, Daniel. Serve as hideouts that we'll see next week at Abbey Road. One can be found in a store stone quarry system charcoal drawings we'll see next week second site is the catacomb crypt next week of the rune castle in the netherlands 
that has a 30 meter wide wall. 30 meters is almost 90 feet wide, Judy. Wow, that's a, a long wall. And the catacombs wow. for our research on the island. That's the castle in the Netherlands that we'll see next week. And Corian did put a little bit of video of the catacombs on our Facebook page today. So check it out, guys. They're amazing. It may contain critical clues. More clues. Connecting the medieval order of the Knights Templar. There's a mini Sacchini about possible European origin of the Nolan's cross that he found an interesting abbey like Judy was mentioning. It's called the Marmando Abbey. And it's near Milan. That the Cisterians established in Italy. And at this point, we're going to bring on Robert from the UK for Daniel Spinel and Charlotte Wheatley's Artifact Analyst on Season 11, Episode 21, Straight as an Arrow. You guys let me know in chat if you see it and you can hear it okay. Then I'll just keep on going because everything on my end looks good. And here we go, Judy. That's about a five minute. 21 second clip. Here we go. You ready? Okay, we're ready. All right. Season 11, episode 21. Straight as an arrow artifact and feature analysis by the Oak Island Compendium. In this week's episode, Straight as an Arrow, we are first taken to the research center, where the Oak Island team is meeting via teleconference with researchers Korjan Moll and Emiliano Sacchetti. The team is discussing the current state of research regarding the island, and Rick mentions that it is starting to look like possible who and when questions are becoming clear. It is suggested that a trip to areas of interest in Europe could confirm this research and begin to answer other questions. He adds it might be beneficial to the team's work to make such a trip. This leads to the alleged Templar Viking Association involving Oak Island that has been repeatedly mentioned this season. The idea that the Vikings Norse helped the Knights Templar hide artifacts on Oak Island continues to be speculated. It is also mentioned that Nolan's Cross seems to be important and areas where possible stellar associations are present would be helpful to visit. We then move to the northern portion of the swamp at the Tiferet location where the Oak Island team is investigating. This location was originally suggested by Petter Amundsen and has been put forth again by researcher John Edwards as a possible area of a treasure deposit. The Oak Island team believes there has been a disturbance under the large boulder found at this location that they believe suggests it has been moved by man. It's noted that surface cobble is present and a stick is found between the boulder and the sediment. The stick will be C14 tested to determine its possible age, which the team hopes suggests when this work was done. It should be noted that this same methodology was used at the Stone Road feature and does present some issues regarding when the feature was actually constructed. Based on this excavation, it appears that someone was working in this area and dug into the glacial till. The team suspects that this work improved water drainage and may have been completed to change the water level in the area. They noted this is not a natural feature in their opinion and needs more work. The scene continues at the Northern Swamp location as the Oak Island team continues to excavate this area. The team notices a large tree stump in the excavated soil, which draws a quick comparison to the tree stumps found in the southeast corner of the swamp shown in previous episodes. Just like that area, it is surmised that this northern section of the swamp was not marshy land at one point, and where trees and foliage grew. As the work continued, Jack Begley discovered a log that appeared to be axe-cut. It also appeared that there is an alignment of stones in the feature with a rock-line depression. The compendium wonders if this feature could be related to the feature that was on lot 5 that was a circular depression of stones. More on this possibility will be coming soon in a special report by Compendium Investigations. Hollywood's involvement in the Oak Island mystery. 
As for the crossbow bolt, the compendium recognizes this artifact, as it has been written about at length by the original Compendium Blockhouse blog and Jovan Hutton Pulitzer. Compendium investigations will bring you more information on this alleged crossbow bolt that our readers will find extremely interesting coming soon. The action shifted back to the North Swamp location, where Dr. Ian Spooner and more members of the Oak Island team gather to hear his opinion of the area. It's stated that the area looks to be a 1 over 2 over 1 level construct, and no metals have been detected thus far. There seems to be uniformity of the stones in this area. Dr. Spooner said it it's unique, and suggests collecting a core sample to test for composition. He mentions that it appears to be a man-made ring feature of stones that is unrecorded. It's also mentioned that the feature collects fresh water very quickly. Surveyor Steve Guptill measures the pit area and mentions it is the same depth as the paved area, one foot below sea level. The axe-cut wood logs appear to be similar to the survey spikes that Fred Nolan found in the swamp during his work. The team will wait until the results are received for... and the testing before proceeding further. Our analysis concludes at the War Room, where researchers Corjan Mole and Emiliano Sacchetti rejoin the Oak Island team to discuss plans for a road trip for the Fellowship to Europe. Corjan Mole mentions that he would like the team to visit two sites in the Netherlands. The first is described as a stone quarry system that has hundreds of charcoal drawings that served as a hideout for the Knights Templar. The Compendium believes this is called Seistert Stone Quarry. He also mentions the catacombs of a ruined castle that has Knights Templar symbols similar to ones found on Oak Island. This appears to be Valkenburg Castle. Sacchetti proposes the team visits northern Italy in the Milan region to see a Cistercian Abbey that is connected to astronomical research. This appears to be Morimondo Abbey. He proposes Professor Adriano Gaspani joins them so he can present some further research that he has completed. At this time last season, Sacchetti mentioned him planning to visit the Vatican, library to find information about transatlantic voyages during the medieval period by the Knights Templar. Apparently that was unsuccessful. Until next week. Please visit www.theoakislandcompendium.com for the article and our other content related to the Oak Island mystery. Good day from the Compendium. Daniel and Charlotte. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel and Charlotte, for that very good info recap. Thank you so much. It was very good, guys. Thanks for giving some stuff that I didn't know. There you go. There's the web page. I also got to give my crew before we see a little drone video. There's my crew right there. It makes this whole thing work. Without them, it doesn't work. Thank you, guys. You're welcome, John, from all of us. And there's the professor in Charlotte. You just heard Raymond doing his audio for people that have bad eyesight can't read good or whatever goes on as you get older. It's a nice audio to hear, Judy. It is. I'm sure there are people that do enjoy it, and I'm sure Tammy's one of them. Right. we, we got to pray for Muyan Osprey to come back in the year 2024. I haven't heard a peep. See what happens there. And nothing on the tours. Go see my main man, Tony Sampson. Tell him Johnny sent you. Get a tour around the island. Have fun. All right. Let me see how many we got in the giveaway. 28 entries so far. And you only got to put a hashtag in, hashtag book in once. You can put it in a million times. It's only going to take one. So... We're going to see a little look back drone video. They try to do it around the same season. This was done in March 27th of 2023. Almost a year ago, Judy, right? March 27th, 2023. Wow, John. That year went fast. Yep. Let's uh, take a look, and then we'll do the drawing, and then we'll get out of here. Sounds good. Three, two, one.
And there you have it. Last March 27th, 2023. Don't forget, hashtag book for the giveaway. Very, very good. Beautiful job, Osprey New One, for sure. We thank the Muyan. We must call the Muyan Osprey back. Oh, Muyan Osprey. Muyan Osprey. Okay, that's it. <laughs> yes, because we want him back badly. All right, let's get to the drawing for our free The Jerusalem Files book by Corian and Christopher and a quest hat. Let me see what we got. Good here. luck, everybody. Good luck. There we go. We got 38 entries. Wow. For a book and a hat. And again, like I said, when we do the draw, and if I can remember or look through my book, if you want a hat, just let me know in chat. And you just get the book and we'll redraw for a quest hat. Are you guys ready? I think we're all ready. Hello, Samuel. 38 it is, Judy. Here we go. Okay. Three, two, one, bingo. David Webb is the winner. Congratulations, David. Are you in the house? Because I can't remember what I did two minutes ago. <laughs> Let's see if he's in. There he is. David Webb in the house. You want a book from Corian and Christopher and a Quest swag hat? Send your address to the Quest of Oak Island at AOL.com. No initials with your name. It's got to be a full name like Paul Smith. It can't be P. Smith. Address, city, town, Providence. And if you're international, I need your telephone number for stamps.com. Otherwise, I can't do it. If you let me know tonight, I can get it out tomorrow morning, your hat wise, and tell Corian where to mail the book. There you got it, guys. All right, Judy, that's about all I got for tonight. If you want to uh, wrap it up, and I'll wrap it up myself and get out of here. All righty. First of all, thanks, everybody, for all your encouragement every week. You know, I love this part of it so much. I could do this every night because I, I like your company. Anyway, have a good week. Um, enjoy the show next week, and I will see you on Wednesday night. And in the meantime, please, everyone, from my heart, stay safe, please. You too, John. Right. Thank you so much, Judy. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, people keep on trying, but don't forget, it only goes to people that have not won. So your odds keep on going up. Every week we do this. Your odds keep on going up. All right, guys. I'll see you next week, pre-show, Tuesday, 6.45 p.m. They find some kind of coin or artifact on Lot 5. You'll see the promo on all my channels. But remember, guys, what do I tell you? Always go forward. You may get a setback in your life, but just believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams, no matter how old you are. For tomorrow is a never given. Never in this crazy world we live in. It's just nutso. So as my friend Jan says, you keep smiling. You never know what that other person's going through. Keep that smile going. And as Judy says, stay safe. Also, stay strong. Keep that positive vibes going strong. Get that negativity out. No negativity. Be positive. Thank you for joining me and Judy tonight. 
She is the queen of synopsis. It'll be posted on our Facebook group, The Quest of Oak Island, for all to read. I'll see you next pre-show, next Tuesday. You'll be with Judy next Wednesday, episode 11. I mean, episode 22, Abbey Road. We're going for a trip. So bring your lunch, bring your bottle of wine. And also the same night, it'll be drilling, uh, digging down on 4.9. I don't know if it's recent or not. And we'll watch them as close as we can. Again, everybody, hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Take care. And bye-bye. <laughs>